Hey guys, I'm Molly Sanyor, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to throw a cylinder. For a beginner, the fundamentals. First, you wanna take your wedge ball of clay and tap it round on the bottom that's gonna connect with the wheel, making sure you're not trapping any air bubbles to begin with underneath the clay. So a rounded bottom. You can also give yourself a head start by tapping it into a kind of an egg shape where it's a little more coned up, round on the bottom, and then with dry hands, it is important that everything is dry. Your wheel should be spinning counterclockwise if you are a right-handed potter like me, this is my right hand. So dry to dry, wheel is spinning counterclockwise, and at three and nine o'clock with dry hands, I can tap down against the clay, making sure it's stuck on there and pushing that clay kind of up into a cone. This is gonna help the next step, which is called coning up and down. So once it's stuck on there and once it's tapped into a cone, you can then add some water. The water is gonna let the clay slide right through your hands and make sure that nothing gets stuck with the friction of dry clay. So I love a wet sponge in my right hand while when we cone up and down, center, open, and establish the bottom, the left hand is the boss hand. To be the boss hand, that means that this left elbow is in my hip socket against my body. So when I lean forward, my whole forearm pushes straight through the center of the clay and I'm making contact with the palm of my hand up through my thumb. So on the bat, leaning up, this left boss hand leans into the clay and already the clay listens and starts to come into a cone. So water's gonna help it slide, the right hand squeezing a little water, left hand's the boss. Now the right hand's job is to scoop that clay from the bottom, connecting to that boss hand, squeezing that clay with the right fingertips into the left palm, letting it rotate, then squeezing, coming up, letting it rotate. Notice my thumb is up, pointing towards the air the whole time, helping to create the cone. Slow release. So this is what my hands are doing while coning up. I can add a little water. Left hand's the boss. I'm making contact right here. Don't want to grip it with the pinkies or the fingers or undercut. You want to lean at that diagonal of the cone. So then the right hand is loosey-goosey. It is not anchored. So the left thumb connects the boss hand. Fingertips will push into that palm. So that's the connection we're making. Start at the base, start seeing the color of your wheel head or your bat, link on to your left boss hand and let those right fingertips squeeze into the clay. But if you squeeze too hard in one place, it's gonna to wanna to rip off there. So you wanna relax your pressure as you squeeze the clay into your left palm, coming up together. And when you get to the top, hold it, let it rotate, 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 slow release. So coning up and down is really important because it prepares the clay, just like wedging does. It also helps center the clay. So by coning up and down, you squeeze out any air bubbles that might've gotten in there, any inconsistencies in the clay get worked out by coning up and down. And you cone up and down until you have perfect horizontals. So I see a little twist, so I might cone up one more time. But let's talk about coning down. Left hand's still the boss. That means that it's anchored against my body. My form, as I lean forward, makes connection with the palm and my thumb, pointing up in the air, starting at the top, the right hand, again, load up my water, my sponge, so it doesn't dry out on me. Connect my elbow to my body, hug my left thumb. Let the right hand kind of get some anchored, anchoredness against the left hand, squeezing that thumb. And then patiently, the right hand pushes downwards. As the right hand is pushing down, the left hand is supporting the clay. And as you reach the bat, the right hand's gonna drop down all the way until the right hand makes pressure at the base of the clay. So as long as you apply pressure from the top to the bottom, before you press it down low, you take your fingertips and make pressure all the way to the bottom, get there, slow release. So you establish that cone. As long as you have a cone, you can cone up and down all day, and you should cone up and down until your clay feels smooth. You don't have to cone all the way up like I did last time, but you can notice this one, I could feel an air bubble I just put in there because I was talking and working. So hug my thumb, press down, Hands are connected the whole time. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Wherever you're getting, let the clay rotate. One more time. Squeezing that clay. You can feel air bubbles pop. You can feel inconsistencies working their right way out. And as I squeeze, I'm feeling the clay. Oh, okay, it's getting thinner, so I need to relax my pressure. All right, clean up my sponge. Hold on to my thumb. Patiently push it down. If the right hand becomes the boss and the left hand takes a break, you get a mushroom every time. So left hand's the boss, right hand's patiently pushing down, and then drop that pressure. You can drop it, like I say, into a prayer hand. Let the prayer hand drop that wrist down to the back. Rotate, 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 slow release. So now it's looking smooth and almost centered. Once you've coned up and down enough, which again, do it as many times as you need, 
I'll do it one more time just to smooth that out. Then we're going to pretend like we're coning down, but instead of dropping to a cone, we're just going to push it to center. And you can see how taking the time to cone up and down, it's pretty much centered. But before we create the opening for our cylinder, we want to get it low, centered, and wide. We don't want to open a tall form. So hug your thumb. Left hand is the boss in my hip socket. Right hand's patient. And what's going to happen is instead of creating that cone, I'm going to allow my left boss hand to touch the bat. When it touches the bat, right hand's patiently pushing down, left hand's the boss leaning in, my palm, not my fingers, thumb still against it. Once I make that circle, see the circle around my base, that means that my left hand has pushed low enough to reach it. At that point, I'm not gonna let the right hand become the boss and push it down into a plate. I'm gonna keep it anchored up right there. See if I lean on it, it becomes a cone. And allow my right hand to open up like a karate chop right down the middle of the clay. So left hand's leaning, right hand opens up and just hold it right there. Rotate. Rotate, rotate, until you get that wobble out, and then slow release. And that's a centered form. You also can get in the habit of kind of removing the slip every now and then. All right, if it gets off center, and it's ba-bump, 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 anchor up that boss hand, add a little water. Put the boss on the bat, lean into it. On the bat, you gotta make sure you're on the bat, and then the right hand comes into play to hold it flat, anchoring itself on the boss hand, opening up to create surface across the whole thing. If you have a fist, you'll make, you'll make a bowl. You know, bowls are pretty easy to get that low curve, but a cylinder, you wanna keep it contained. So rotate, 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 slow release. And I will admit my wheel doesn't have any bat pins, so they, it kind of jiggles around a lot. So don't let the bat pin get on your nerves like it does mine every now and then. All right, so we're centered. After you, Dry tap, cone up and down, center. Now, left hand is still the boss, anchor up. Make sure you have a straight line through your form. Add some water, connect your hands. I connect my right hand over my left hand. Let the middle finger find the center and drill down, like a drill press, zoop, straight down. Speed is your friend, speed is your friend until you've opened up. So I found the center and patiently, wheel goes fast, finger goes slow, wheel goes fast, Finger goes slow and just slow enough. You're trying to, to gauge how thick it is. You can always stop it and stick a needle tool in. That's a whole nother thing. You can clean this out. Take a clean needle tool, stop your wheel, drag your finger down to where the meets the clay and that's how thin my bottom is. So pretty, getting pretty thin there. All right, so now as a beginner, sometimes I see students just open and pull. So they get a tall cylinder and then you look inside and the bottom is this narrow cone from where they just opened. So the next step is to establish the bottom. Add a little water, left hand is still the boss. While the left hand's the boss, speed is our friend. Right fingertip's gonna drag down towards the bottom, okay? It's connecting like this, it would be like this. I'm gonna show you here. Just the fingertip is gonna drag along the bottom. It's not gonna curve up, that's a bowl. It's gonna drag, 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 and release. So that on the interior of this, I'm creating like a Hershey kiss form or a volcano form. I wanna drag my fingertip to where the bottom in here opens wide enough that I can get my fist. Okay, so it's there. Once I open it wide enough, hold it. Notice I'm kind of gripping my thumb over this just to hold the clay, if it got a little off center, hold it. Rotate, rotate, rotate. My hand looks like this. I'm, I'm gripping this finger and the thumb, making connection all around, making sure it's centered. At this point, once you have a bottom, wring out your sponge, Elbows against your body, reach to the center while it spins, and go from center to three o'clock. Again, I'm a right-hander. My wheel is going counterclockwise. Ring out your sponge, and this is a good time to make sure it's smooth on the bottom. No ridges. If it was curving, you can just burp, flatten it out. If there are any grooves, you can smooth them out. You just wanna be careful not to press down and make it too thin at this point. So your pressure, center over, smooth it out. The faster you go, the more spirals you'll put in, so be patient, let it rotate, then move it, let it rotate, then move it. All right, we have a flat bottom. So we come up and down, we centered, we opened, we established the bottom. Now it's time to pull. Now the right hand is the boss. That means my right elbow is in my hip socket. Right fingertips are gonna start and end on the bat, or I should actually just say start on the bat. And it's called pulling, but really you're squeezing the fatness of the clay between both fingertips on either side of the clay, squeezing it, and as you squeeze it, it moves up. So you wanna guide it up, and to get height for a cylinder in, you wanna pull in the shape of a volcano, Hershey kiss, and keep the lip more narrow than the walls as long as possible. Another thing, before you do your first pull, I currently have this shape 
that is not that volcano shape. So set yourself up for success in a great pull by just leaning on that. I have a wet sponge in my right hand. I'm just leaning on it at three o'clock to get that volcano shape. There we go. Slow release. Now we're ready to pull. All right, add a little water at three o'clock. I love a wet sponge over my right fingertips, which the right hand is now the boss. Speed is no longer our friend. It will kill, speed will kill. So you wanna slow down controlled. This hand for the first pull, everything can connect. My thumb, these fingers, the inside fingers along here on the clay, everything from every angle is squeezing that clay. Starting at the base, right hand is the boss. So that means I'm gonna squeeze like this. If the right hand takes a break and the left hand becomes a boss, you have a bowl. So be mindful of your pressure. Who's the boss? Right hand, start at the base. Press in that clay, you already see it moving. Inside the hand is there to meet it. Thumb reaches these fingers, but I'm putting them behind because it feels more comfortable for me. And look, I'm making connection with one, two, three, four fingers, pushing towards the inside, connecting with that thumb, squeezing that clay. And as I squeeze it, it's coming upwards. Inside finger kind of relaxes. And here's another trick, watch this finger. See how sharp it's getting? As I get to the top, I can compress that clay all at one time and just hold it. Rotate, rotate, rotate. So I'm making pressure here, pressure here, and pressure there, just at the top. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Slow release. All right, squeeze out my sponge. We'll add a little bit more water. Three o'clock. Start all the way at the base. Right hand's the base, or right hand's the boss. Pressing into that clay. You already see it moving with, from the boss hand. Reach and mirror the pressure. Sometimes people open up and you're not mirroring. So mirror the pressure. Get that hand down in there. Just put pressure against this outside right hand with pressure from the inside hand, making sure that they're in alignment, squeezing against each other to make that clay come up. And as soon as I can, this, out, this thumb connects. It gives me more stability. And here, I really just rotate, rotate, rotate. Put that thumb on top, that index finger, rotate, rotate, rotate. Slow release. When you're pulling, you can think of the rule of thirds. So add a little water, we'll do one more pull. Bottom third, middle third, top third. This is always the thinnest, usually the thickest. So as you're pulling, inside hand goes down, right hand's the boss. This is where you're gonna squeeze the most. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. When you get here, you relax. When you get here, you really relax your pressure squeezing. So I'm squeezing, let it move, and then I come up. I squeeze, let it rotate, then I come up. Now I'm in that middle third, so I'm gonna relax my pressure squeezing, but let it rotate, then come up, let it rotate. Now here it's really thin. So I'm really not squeezing at all, just holding the clay, connecting my hands and rotate, rotate, rotate. Once you squeeze that clay and you feel like the clay is evenly thick from the bottom to the top, bring out your sponge, get all the water out, bring in there, reach in there while it spins. Make sure your bottom's smooth. And then a good practice is to slice your cylinder in half. So you can see, do you have 90 degree transitions or do you have a bowl? Do you have evenly thick or is it fatter at the bottom? Now before I cut it in half, I wanna put a rib on it. A rib is a shaping tool. They can bend, they're out of plastic, metal, um, wood. I like the metal or the rubber ones that kind of have a little bend to them, but I love for a cylinder a 90 degree. Put the 90 degree right there. Gently from the inside, you're gonna make pressure. So inside, rib, you again, wanna be careful not to press this way with there and not align. So starting at the bottom, right hand's the boss. Inside hand's just gonna gently push the clay against the rib to just straighten it up. And you can see I'm letting it rotate. You can see where I'm making pressure against the wall from the inside and then slowly coming up. And I'm not moving the rib tool off the bat until I have to. Right now I can anchor it on that wheel and get a perfect vertical for my cylinder. Now I've gotta kind of release it from the wheel head and anchor myself against my body. As soon as I can connect my inside hand to the outside rib tool, I wanna to make that move, rotate, rotate, rotate. Might see a little bit, I can press out there to straighten up. Just trying to get that nice 90 degree, smooth out the surface. And from here, you could really do whatever you want. But let's slice it in half and see how we did. So to slice it, make sure your wire tool is clean. Then you wrap it nice and tight like dental floss, thumbs pressed down as you pull all the way under. That will release it from the back. So you can also just go halfway under and then come up. And as you come up, it will reveal everything. So what we see is a really thin bottom. There's really not much clay, which it's really thin. I knew at the beginning, but it is open flat. 
the the transition is a, is a decent 90 degree it could have been squeezed in my opinion a little fatter there squeeze it harder and you can actually see that rule of thirds it is fatter and thicker that bottom third and then it does get thinner to the top you're also looking for horizontal throw lines because if you see diagonal it means that you're pulling too fast you want to see horizontal because it lets you know that the clay rotates and then you come up and then it rotates and then you come up so it keeps everything centered so you're looking for 90 degree transition flat bottom evenly thick from top to bottom hope this helps and before i take this one off i'll just show you some other things to think about when you're pulling you want to get these hands in alignment here so the outside hand is the boss you're anchored against yourself it's squeezing against that inside hand but it's leaning inward. So as you're throwing a cylinder to keep the height, you're keeping it a little more narrow. So then by the end, you can take that 90 degree and open it right up. Another trick to think about when you're pulling is once you've gotten some height and you just wanna get a little more out of it, you can stretch the clay. You can take this inside hand and press it out. And then this outside hand that is the boss is gonna come back in and scoop it up, pushing it back. It's gonna to wanna to come up pushing it back to the center form. You know, so you're stretching it out from the inside, pushing out, but then this hand's coming back in. And by doing that, when it's on the wheel and stuck down, it gives you a little more stretch to the clay. And also from a cylinder, that's where you can get curvy. You can press from the inside, get a curve. You can bottleneck by squeezing in. You can do all kinds of fun things. So start with the cylinder, cut them in half. It's a great practice to get your bearings for working with clay. And then if you leave the clay as dry as possible, get your slip out before you cut it in half. This is almost just ready to arch it up and you can wedge it and throw it again. All right, hope this helps. See y'all for the next video.